First of all, thank you very much for having me. In recent times, myself and other Monday holders have sent a communication in relation to the allegations of the use of orphans for child labor at coal mines and other potentially harmful and hazardous working environment. I continue to meet with civil society and survivors of contemporary forms of slavery regularly with a view to receiving information and sending additional communications where appropriate. In terms of reporting, although I have not dealt with the DPRK recently, this year's theme for the report to the UN Human Rights Council will focus on prison labor and there should be scope to explore what happens in the country. Despite the COI report exposing the nature and gravity of the atrocities in the DPRK and its numerous recommendations for the country, the state of human rights in North Korea has not shown improvement. Within my own areas of expertise, I continue to receive information regarding the state-sponsored forced and child labor in a DPRK, affecting many citizens within a country as well as beyond its borders. This has been confirmed, for example, by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in her report entitled Promoting Accountability in the DPRK in 2021, where she expressed her concerns over the continuing existence of forced labor in a country. Additionally, despite the UN Security Council resolutions, tens of thousands of North Korean workers continue to be officially dispatched overseas, primarily in Russia and China. Unfortunately, contemporary forms of slavery seem to be essential for the DPRK to obtain funds for its nuclear weapons program, which is in direct violation of UN sanctions. The information I have received suggests that the DPRK has not implemented its legal obligations faithfully and effectively. I believe that lack of cooperation from the DPRK is one challenge. For example, I did send a country visit request in 2022, but have not received any response from the government as yet. Another challenge is that human rights issues and concerns are often sidelined in the context of the DPRK with the ongoing threats of nuclear weapons proliferation taking precedence. Moreover, numerous pressing and significant international crises and challenges have led to the overshadowing of pressing human rights concerns in a country. Yes, the issues I am paying closer attention at the moment are forced labor in a DPRK detention facilities, public mobilization campaigns, child labor, officially dispatched overseas workers, and sexual slavery of North Korean women and girls who have been trafficked into China. I continue to receive credible information from civil society and survivors in this regard, including the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea, which regularly investigates and publicizes the existence of contemporary forms of slavery affecting North Korean citizens. And I would like to commend the committee for its important contributions to the eradication of these practices in the DPRK. In terms of recommendations I could make, first of all, DPRK should ratify the fundamental ILO conventions, particularly the abolition of forced labor convention, which addresses state-sponsored forced labor, as well as other international human rights instruments and implement these faithfully. The DPRK should also become a member of ILO, which can provide guidance and support to enhance the protection of workers' rights in a country. Further, I call upon the DPRK to allow official visit by UN Special Rapporteurs, including Dr. Elizabeth Thurman and myself, so that we can conduct independent investigations and promote constructive dialogue with the government. Thank you very much.